Hey FTC teams and welcome to the third and final part of our judging and awards video series. My name is Annika and I'm from team 979-4wizards.exe. This part is all about pit judging. In part one we talked about the award breakdown and in part two we talked about the judging interview. And you can access those videos through our playlist. Let's get into it. In our last video we talked about the judge's point of view on the judging interview. Now in our transition to pit judging let's talk about what their next steps are. To give you the big picture, there are usually four to six interview rooms and every panel or every panel in one of these rooms, I should say, sees six to eight teams. So that's a total of uh, at most 48 teams, at least 24 teams. You wanna make sure that they remember your team of all of these teams. And we talked about being memorable in our last video. After all the interviews are over, they're all gonna convene in a room. And each one of the panels will nominate teams for different awards. So of the six to eight teams that they saw during the interviews, they'll nominate of these teams for, for the different awards. If you were memorable and you made it easy for them to want to nominate you and for them to justify why they should nominate you to the other judges, then that's a big win for your team. While they figure out who to nominate for the different awards from the different rooms, they look through engineering notebooks and they talk to each other about the teams. And we talked about the notebook in, the, in our first video. So after they figure out who to nominate of all of these 24 to 48 teams, there are going to be groups of judges focused on individual awards that are gonna come meet your teams in the pits. So the pit judging is important to think of as a follow-up to the judging interview. Now, a kind of caveat to this is often you will see the same judge from your interview in the afternoon as a pit judge. And often you'll be like, oh, I talked to this guy or I talked to this woman this morning about the same stuff. So there's no point in me repeating myself. But this is simply not true. One, it's been a few hours. They probably have forgotten about you after seeing so many teams. So you want to remind them. Moreover, there are probably some new uh, judges with them. So you want to treat every single set of judges, even if they're some of the same people, as if they're your first. You can say, like I told you about this morning or like I told you about earlier in the afternoon, you can reference previous conversations, but you still want to give them the same info. Otherwise, when they go back to talk to the other judges, they're going to have different information and it's going to be hard for them to really figure out what your key points are. Also keep in mind that pit judging happens in the afternoon and it happens simultaneously with matches. Now this is a big deal. There is a lot that happens in the afternoon. Matches, scouting, pit judging, so much stuff is happening. So you wanna make sure you know where your team is at all times. What we like to do is we have a whiteboard in our pit and we'll write down where our members are going on the whiteboard. So for example, I'll write down Annika bathroom or write down Shruti uh, sitting in the stand scouting so that we all know where everybody is. This way, if two of us are in the pit and a judge comes by, one of our team members can go out and get the other team members who are in the pit, or sorry, not in the pit, who are not in the pit rather, who are scouting, who are in the stands, who are whatever, wherever they are, and you can make sure that your whole team is there for the judges. Now, usually judges are going to be really agreeable to you. They're people too. If you tell them that your team is not all present and you ask them for a few minutes, you ask them to come back in a little bit, they will come back. But you don't want to be all confused and flustered. You want to have a really good handle on where everybody is so you can go and get people if needed. So pit judging. Like I said earlier, pit judging is a follow-up to the judging interview. And they're going to ask you targeted questions about specific topics. So if they say, tell me about your robot, you don't want to spend the whole time talking about outreach because you aren't answering their questions and they're probably there for a robot award. However, on the counter, if they say, tell me about your team very vaguely, you can ask them, do you want to hear about my robot or my outreach? And now they may say, tell me about both. In this situation, you really want to try and... Uh, give them a little bit of everything and let them ask questions. You don't want to give them too much info about one thing because that might not be what they're looking for. And you have no way of knowing what they're looking for if they just say, tell me about your team. So you want to try and be as, gen but not generic, but you want to try and be as versatile and explain things all across the board as possible. You don't want to limit yourself to just motivate or just connect or just innovate. You want to let them ask you questions about what they're looking for. And a helpful tip, if you don't see them taking notes down on their clipboards or their note sheets, you probably aren't telling them what they are looking for. 
So you can ask them if they have questions as you go. You don't wanna just talk at them for the whole 10 minutes. In pitch judging, it's really important to know the right person to discuss every single topic. You don't want to have um, your outreach person talk about the software because they're not gonna know as much about the software as your software lead might. This is, it also goes back to knowing where every single team member is. If your drive team is all playing a match and your lead hardware person is on the drive team and in the pit you talk about hardware with the judges while your drive team is playing a match, the lead hardware person is not gonna be able to give his or her insight on the hardware. And this is really, really important because you wanna make sure the experts are there to talk about each topic. At the same time, everyone should have a general idea of what the team has done in every single uh, department or every single subsystem of the team. So if a judge says, hey, you in the white sweatshirt, tell me about your uh, robot. And I don't know a lot about the robot or I didn't work a lot on the robot. I want to be able to still say a little bit and then pass it on. So I want to be able to pass it on very efficiently and very smoothly without it being erupt and disjoint. But I still don't want to talk gibberish or say nothing at all because they asked me the question directly. So in that situation, I could say something like, well, I'm the hours lead on the team, so I didn't have, or, so in that situation, I could say something to the effect of, well, our robot is very cool because of our mineral mechanism. And our mineral mechanism is interesting because we went through so many iterations to get to our final product. Um, I was the outreach lead on our team, so I can't tell you as much about the mineral mechanism as Ishan could. So I'm going to ask him to tell you more about the different iterations. And in that situation, I'm kind of passing it on to someone, but I'm still showing that I know about the different iterations and the design process. Again, in the pit, you want to have some visuals. People are usually visual learners, and so they'll learn better by looking at slides or looking at posters or something visual. If you have prototypes in the pit, that's always a good thing. Now, if you're going to talk about the robot, you want to make sure the robot is there. This way you can demonstrate things uh, hands-on, you can show different mechanisms, and you can really make sure that they understand your points. I, like I said earlier, know where your team is at all times. And any of the volunteers at the competition can give the judges good or bad feedback. So if you're on the field and you are very gracious towards your opponents, the refs can say, hey, you know what, judges, this team was not very gracious. I don't think that they should get an award. On the flip side, if you're extremely nice, courteous, and polite, the refs can go say, hey, judges, this team was amazing on my field. I think that they should get an award or some sort of special commendation. Any volunteer can give feedback. So you want to make sure you're always on your A game, you're always in tip-top shape. And this applies to your parents too. If your parents are wearing team colors or a team shirt, then they're associated with your team. So if they aren't on their best behavior too, you could get penalized. So make sure your parents know that as well. So we're just about done with our judging and awards videos. And I want to leave you with one final message. And that is that there is no I in team. Everyone on the team should know their strengths and what they contributed. Your judging interview is a reflection of your full season, not just competition day. So if your season does not have cohesiveness and togetherness and team dynamic, your judging will not reflect that because you don't have it. So while not everyone should be a lead on something, you have to distribute the responsibilities across the board so that everyone can have ownership of something. Now, everyone should have a sense of what the team has done, but you still have to know who has the most knowledge of each topic. And I keep coming back to this idea. Everyone has to own something and everyone has to know who owns what. This way, if I'm asked a question that I'm not familiar with, I know who to pass it on to but I'm also able to talk a little bit about it in case they call me out directly. This also means that we have to look at our team members for cues and be a well-oiled machine. So if my team member is trying to pass something on to me, but I'm dozed off and I'm in space, then I'm not gonna be able to respond adequately or fast enough because I'm not gonna be present. So even when your team members are talking, you wanna be looking at them for cues, for body language, whether they're facing you, pointing to you, so you can know when to jump in. You also wanna know if your team member is struggling, if they're stammering, if they're unsure of what they're saying, and if they look flustered, it's okay to say, hey, can I jump in here? And you wanna help them out. You don't want anyone to feel like they're being forced to answer something that they don't know about or to feel uncomfortable because that can really, really be difficult for the person talking. 
You really want to be confident as individuals, but also show positive team, team dynamics because it's all about being a team and working together. And that's about it for judging awards and competition day. Thank you all so much for watching our video series and I hope it helped out. You can access our presentation at this link below or on the QR code from the first video. Again, thank you so much for watching our video series on judging awards and competition day. You can access our previous videos from the description or from the playlist. And if you have any questions, please feel free to just drop us a line at wizards.exe at gmail.com or leave a comment below. I hope this helped you and your teams. Thank you.